So my name's Kevin Garrity. I'm currently a research scientist at NIST, uh, but I did most of, or at least the, init the initial part of this work while I was at Rutgers with Joe Bennett, Karen Rabe, and David Vanderbilt. And so an outline of my talk, a lot of the ideas are going to be familiar with you if, if you've been listening to the pre previous few talks, but the basic idea, I'm gonna start with the initial design of the GBRV library including the motivation, the testing we designed, and then I'm gonna go through how, it has, how the library has evolved with time as new testing has become available and how I've improved a few of the convergence properties. So if I can take you back to when I started this project, the state of open source pseudo-potentials were kind of a mess. So they were basically designed on a case-by-case -case basis and oftentimes people either didn't know where they came from or they would be downloaded from the internet without any evidence that, it, that the, the pseudo potentials from the internet had been tested in anything. And the testing was basically the individual's responsibility. So this led to a lot of duplication of work and also some open questions in the field about how reliable pseudo potentials are, how transferable can they be, and is there a uh, interaction between the transferability and the computational cost. So this was all uh, incompatible with high throughput calculations, which we were starting to do at Rutgers at the time. And so we wanted to run thousands of calculations with lots of crystal structures, uh, with elements from across the periodic table. We couldn't individually test the pseudo potentials in each new crystal structure. So and the design goals of the GBRV high throughput pseudo potential library were to cover uh, the entire periodic table except for the F block. We, I, from the beginning designed the pseudo potentials to be a balance between the most accurate possible results and uh, ha having a low plane wave cutoff. So to do that I used in, I designed both, I'm using the Vanderbilt Ultrasoft code, I designed Ultrasoft pseudo potentials for Quantum Espresso and PAWs for Avenet. And also for simplicity of use I wanted the pseudo potentials to all run adequately at, at about 40 Rydberg cutoff. And of course we want the pseudo potentials to be transferable, not to only work for elemental tests. So the testing suite I designed, uh, which you've heard a little bit about before, includes uh, FCC and BCC elemental tests, uh, also rock salt structures to test low oxidation states, perovskites to test some higher oxidation states, and uh, half hoistlers. So those have a combination of covalent bonding, metallic bonding, but they still have a very simple crystal structure, only three atoms. And I focused on, uh, as some of the previous talks mentioned, I stuck to crystal structures with small cubic systems so we could run the tests efficiently. But using this sort of suite, we could still span most of chemical space, at least the relevant parts of chemical space. Uh, and the observables I looked at, lattice constant, bulk modulus, the energy difference between the FCC and BCC uh, energy uh, crystal structures, and also a little bit of magnetic moments of oxides, although a lack of magnetic testing was a problem with this initial test set. And I compared to all electron Wien 2K calculations, which I performed as part of this uh, as part of setting up this set of calculations. I think that these all electron calculations could be improved upon, and so that is certainly a direction for future work, future experts with these various all electron codes. And I know there's work, there's obviously work being done by people at this conference in that direction. I'm gonna show some results for both my libraries with VASP and Quantum Espresso and several other libraries. These are often older versions of the libraries which were available when I was doing the testing. So you heard about the JTH set in the previous talk. There's also two versions of PSLib with a high cutoff and a low plane wave cutoff. Uh, the low plane wave cutoff is sort of more comparable to my set and then an older version of the vast PAWs. So I'll show a couple uh, plots like this which have a bunch of elements, and this is the lattice constant percentage error. 
Uh, the GBRV results, which I'm going to focus on, are the, with the solid lines to help them stand out from the other pseudo-potential sets. And you can see that basically all of these pseudo-potential sets now agree on the FCC lattice constants to within a I mean, plus or minus 0.2% error. If we move on to uh, testing sets of different oxidation states, this is the percentage error for a bunch of perovskites I designed. So in, at least in my testing, I stuck to sort of chemically realistic oxidation states. So not like, so yeah, only, so some examples of three plus, four plus ions, and most of the pseudo-potentials agree for most of the compounds, but we do identify some problematic ones uh, so this is why it's important to test many oxidation states, as was mentioned by the previous speaker. Uh, so again, uh, this is one last testing set. This is the half Hoistlers. I realize you won't be able to read all the different compounds I looked at, but part of the reason I tested so many different compounds is I wanted to make sure I wasn't, uh, I guess, overfitting to a small number of test sets, make sure I could reproduce a wide variety of uh, wide variety of atomic properties. So summary of the testing results, we typically get lattice constant errors of less than 0.2% across this range of compounds. And uh, we can also look at the small number of materials outside this range. So having a good average result isn't very useful if you want to study a material which is problematic. And this is what some of the other pseudo-potential sets look like. The PSLib high library, high accuracy library is very accurate. The vast PAWs are quite accurate. And some of the other ones struggle with some of the, some of the older uh, versions of these libraries struggled with the uh, struggle with some of the compounds. So the GBRV uh, pseudo-potentials were basically a good combination of speed, uh, precision, and transferability. So here's a few more details on the convergence results. So this is the plane wave cutoff necessary to converge the lattice constant of the FCC structure within 0.1%. We can see sort of typical patterns you'd expect. 2P elements, 3D elements, and then elements with semi-core states are some of the most difficult to converge with a low plane wave cutoff. Uh, there's a similar pattern here is converging the bulk modulus within 5%. So here are some uh, updates to the initial table. So one thing is that initial all-electron data became available as part of the delta test, part of Kurt's work. And so one thing I discovered doing this is that my initial testing set did not include enough spin polarized calculations. So in particular, manganese, chromium, iron, I and mean, these are some of the most problematic elements typically. And so I updated those pseudo-potentials and PAWs to get at least somewhat better results for this is the delta test for all the different elements. And then this is the lattice constant from the delta test. And also a second problem is that nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine bonds, that short covalent bonds do tend to cause problems with the plane wave cutoff I was aiming for. So this is sort of a limitation of the scheme I am working with, where if you really want to study organic molecules, I would not recommend using these pseudo-potentials. Uh, and so this is a summary of the delta test. I've highlighted the GBRV results with three different codes. And you can see they're largely comparable to other ultrasoft PAW libraries. Uh, I also extended the delta test formalism to work with uh, a zinc blend testing set. So this was new all electron data, which covers a similar chemical space to the rock salt testing data but with a different mix of anions, cations, and of course a different crystal structure. And we can see delta values are mostly less than two MeV, which is a range of, which is typically good enough for most calculations. 
Uh, I also did some work on trying to improve the uh, convergence of the calculate of the pseudo potentials with the quantum espresso linear response code. So the thing I'm doing here is testing the DF, the linear response perturbation theory code versus a finite difference calculation at very high cutoff. And so the two systems I tested are the optical mode of a BCC conventional unit cell, two atom unit cell, or a rock salt structure. And so this is at different plane wave cutoffs, so 40, uh, 45, 60 Rydbergs. This is the error in terahertz of that optical mode. So you can see that it, the high plane wave cutoff, the linear response agrees with the finite difference, which is good, otherwise we'd be in big trouble. And the, but even at moderate plane wave cutoffs, it's possible to get good results for the optical modes. Uh, one thing I should mention is that these are probably the easiest modes to converge. So if you look at the acoustic modes, the convergence, the error is significantly larger. So in a simple system, you can apply the acoustic sum rule, you can enforce the acoustic sum rule, you can fix that, but low-lying uh, modes can be more difficult to converge. Uh, so an outlook, the GBRV pseudo potential library has been a useful uh, contribution to the community. It's been used in a bunch of different papers. Uh, some lessons I've learned along the way. Systematic testing is key to get robust results. Uh, errors of different valence states are often unrelated and they need to be tested separately. Uh, initially, I didn't include enough spin polarized testing. That's something I'm still working on. And convergence can vary between linear response calculations and uh, total energy calculations. And so some outlook in the field. I think modern pseudo potential sets largely agree with the available all electron data. And I'd encourage experts in doing all electron calculations to uh, improve on a lot of the all electron data that I've published. And also, a different area we could push that has gotten a little less attention in this workshop is can we move towards lower cutoffs, better convergence properties? That was really a focus of this pseudo potential library from the start. So, thank you. <laughs>